you are going to have to forgive how white and tired I look. I gave birth a week ago and I'm still quite knackered, but before we rip everything out of the polytunnel, I wanted to give you a quick update. I didn't get to this in time while the tomatoes were still growing, but I do have a lot of pictures, so I'm going to put that in this video and show you everything. We're ripping out the tomatoes at the moment, and the reason for that is we're going to start having the first few frosts very, very soon, and the minute that happens, tomatoes are trashed, so we want to get everything, even the green ones. So for the green tomatoes, we're taking them indoors and they're just going to ripen in there, and I can always make some salsa verde if I want to. Um, I've never done it before, but there's always a first. I will show you what this all looks like. So when you come through the door, this is the first thing you see. The marigolds are still growing very, very nicely. I need to decorate the house with these a lot more. If I didn't mention it in the original video, but the reason we have all these marigolds is they're excellent for just aphids hate them and the last thing we wanted on the tomatoes were aphids. We've had a lot of trouble with that on the roses in our front garden and well I say roses on the rose in the front garden and with all the marigolds that we had in here we haven't had any problems with aphids which was great we had all the roma tomatoes which are those little cherry tomatoes which are kind of that shape nice plum shape so those are all the watering trowels that we had for those and what these are good for is in a polytunnel you want to avoid when you're watering them if there's a whole load of water on the soil that eventually is going to evaporate which will make the polytunnel a little bit like a rainforest and that's not good just because you'll get rot on tomatoes and you really want to avoid that so the good thing about this is it means that the water can go into the soil just at small points but it doesn't completely drench the soil which then can evaporate so it means that you're a lot less likely to have problems we had aroma there and then two here and those have been taken out and those are all the tomatoes that you can see here which we've put into the kitchen there's actually a whole load that I've canned which you can't see there were a good two big stainless steel bowls that I turned into tomato sauce last night I'm still learning how to do that but um no it's been it was my first experience canning and I'm really really enjoying it but anyway those came out this is the borage the borage, I could not believe how good that was at attracting bumblebees and bees. What we would do is in the morning, we would just open the door and then open the stable door over there. And bees would just come in and they were always going for the borage. But this obviously needs to get ripped up as well. Over here, you can see the Ace 55s, which are the much bigger tomatoes. The problem that we originally had with these is that when we were growing them, um, we used egg trays for them. And I think that was a mistake because the roots really struggled to get through and we think that that was one of the reasons why we got blossom end rot. You can't really see it on this one. Can you see there's a very faint mark but on some of the older tomatoes the entire bottom of the tomato was just rotten which meant we lost half the tomato which was very very annoying. But also I don't think we're going to be growing these again. These are heirloom tomatoes but my god they are so faffy. They're such faffy tomatoes. The Romas were an absolute joy to use. You just had to make sure that you watered them and sometimes we forgot to water them because we were busy. When I had to go into hospital, we didn't water them for a few days and the Romas were fine, but these were not happy. So I don't think we'll be growing them again. The plan is that next year, we're just going to grow tomatoes along here, but we will never, ever, ever be growing squash in the polytunnel again because these things have tried to take over the polytunnel several times. They just do too well. And I'll show you all the squash. So there's one little squash coming up there. This is the size. They don't need much longer to ripen. They are so close. And there are some other ones coming through. So this is a male one. That's a male one. I'll see if I can find a female one. That could, no, that's a male one as well. Um, and there are, there are some other male and female plants coming up. So technically, if we still had a load of warm weather left, we would be able to grow a lot more squash, but the frost's coming up, so it's just not going to happen. But there are a lot of squash that are very close, so those will be fine. But this little one here probably won't. So we're just stopping this plant, well, both of these plants from growing anymore and cutting back everything that is trying to grow further into the polytunnel because it's just not going to make it past the frost. And we don't want the plant putting all this energy into new growth 
when really we would much rather it put the energy into the squash that it currently has and you can see there's one back there as well um, rather than trying to grow new leaves which are just going to get killed off in a few weeks so here's another ace 55 another ace 55 I'm probably going to have to rescue that bumblebee in a second. <laughs> as much as bees love this, so do spiders. And while I'm happy for them to kill mosquitoes, I really don't want them to kill a bee because I like bees and one day I will have hives. Okay, good. He's escaped. Good. Actually, he's going to get stuck in there. Come on. Come here, sweetie. There we go. Go on. Go on. There we go. So yeah, these are Ace 55s, that's also Ace 55s, same for there, there, there and there. All the Romans are gone now. Um, but yeah, today my husband's going to be taking out the last of the tomatoes, so we just need to put them out on trays for them to ripen. And then I think another week or two and hopefully all the squash that are still growing will be done. We've been quite lucky really for the squash because I think so far we've grown about 24. Uh, which I'm really really pleased about <laughs> you know for our first year we thought it was going to be an absolute disaster but it hasn't been there's been some things that have gone wrong like with the ace 55s and the blossom end rot but for the most part we've gotten an insane amount of food grown but next year what I want to do is I want to put the squash over on the Hugel culture mound that my husband built up right next to the polytunnel. I think that would actually be slightly better because I can put the squash up on a trellis and then that way I can see the flowers. I can, because I have to hand pollinate all of them. You don't have to, but you are going to get a bigger crop if you hand pollinate them. It also means that I can see where the squash are and you don't have to root around underneath the leaves to find everything. And it's just a time saver. And I also like that the slugs can't get to it because while it was quite protected in here from the slugs out there it is going to be exposed to the slugs um, so <laughs> but what we are thinking of doing so far over the winter is we are thinking of finally getting my quail and having the quail in here over winter which I am really really excited about I have wanted quail for years quail and bees um, the bees are not gonna happen yet I think if I'm lucky I might get that done in five years just because the only way that's going to happen is if we get an extension and we can have the bees kind of on um, a raised part of the extension or if we can extend the garden, all of which is not going to be happening in the next two years. And also, I want to do a few courses and actually make sure that I know what I'm doing. I have read a lot of books on beekeeping, but it's not the kind of thing that I want to wing. Um, and I am a bit scared of being stung, so I think doing a few courses will ma massively help with confidence. It will also help put me in contact with a lot of the beekeepers in the local area so that if I do have problems, I can troubleshoot and ask them, you know, I'm having this problem, you know, are these mites? Is this, uh, you know, a rogue queen, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, I can ask people for advice. So that's something that will happen in a few years. Have the Roma on one side. And then another thing we're thinking of doing is putting strawberries, but hanging from baskets but that will be a spring job. And also if we do that, we can have that with a quail in here as well. So we will see. Um, there's a lot of different things that we could do. We're just going to figure it out as we go along. That's part of the fun. But I thought today I would just show you what we've been doing in the greenhouse, how it's been going. It's been going really, really well. And um, yeah, <laughs> I am very much enjoying having my own garden, growing my own food and learning how to do all of this stuff over here. Actually, one thing, one thing I forgot to show you are some of the sunflowers. There are a lot more somewhere in the pantry drying and originally we were growing these sunflowers for us, but as you can see, the seeds are tiny. That is not worth my time. I'm not, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not doing this where I crack all of these open by hand. It's just not worth it. Instead, we're saving them for the quail when we eventually get them. This will be perfect for them. At some point, what I might do is I might do a video all about our plans for the next um, next season. We are going to be putting in some apple trees, but the apple trees are going to be going up on some espaliers. So they're not just going to be stuck in the ground and growing like a normal tree. Instead, they're going to be trained to grow along a frame. So they don't get as tall. They also produce a lot more. It does mean that you have to wait a little bit longer before they start producing. But the thing is, the time's going to pass anyway, and it's the kind of thing that's 
it's a long-term investment because anything that makes your life easier in the long run is going to be worth its weight in gold so we're getting three apple trees so hopefully in three years I can start making cider again I can start making all my apple crisps there's there's so many things that you can do with apples I can even make some really nice um, what's it called apple wine I think it is personally I prefer the apple cider that is delicious I can make apple cider vinegar which I use for everything um, it's fantastic for skincare and hair care and all that kind of stuff but the thing that I mainly love my apples for apart from just eating them is apple crisps in the winter those are those are fantastic so yeah loads of little things coming up but today I just thought I would show you the polytunnel and um, yeah it's actually been a really good year I'm very very happy with what we've managed to grow and I'm incredibly happy with how the squash turned out so I'm very excited to see how that goes next year when I start growing them on the Hugel culture mount but anyway that's my quick update video for you today I say quick this is probably going to be 15 minutes long but yeah I hope you liked it and I'll have a new video for you soon if you like my content and want to follow me on patreon that's where you can find my early content extra content and see the thought process behind things like my books cover designs videos and artwork you can also find me on Instagram, but the best place to follow me and make sure that all my new content is sent directly to you is through my website and the mailing list. On the top right hand corner, you put your name, the email you want your new content to be sent to, and that's it. You're done.